you just clicked on the video about the scariest character in Game of Thrones lore, the Dreadlord of the Dreadfort, Roose Bolton, the Pink Dread. At least, that's the name he goes by now. There is no easy word for what Roose Bolton is. In the common tongue, he may be called a vampire, a witch, or a warlock, a sorcerer, demon, or ghoul. Other languages offer different names. Nosferatu, Odorotin, Upir, Lou Garo. He has hairless pale skin and pale eyes like two white moons. He has no feelings and uses humans as his playthings. He fixates on the smell of people's blood, constantly leeches himself to purge his own bad blood, and even his food descriptions have a strange focus on blood. Roose Bolton is neither vampire nor human, but another race entirely. He is the people of the night, the people of the blood, or simply, the people. Take a look at this quote for example. The pale man in the bed smiled faintly as the leeches nursed of his blood. I am not a man to be undone, sir. Aha! Checkmate. Roos gives it away right here in Book 2, hidden in plain sight. Roos Bolton is not a man, not a human. Very clever, George, but I think I've solved it. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. The Roos is loose. Let's start with the Dreadfort itself. This northern fortress is so spooky it might as well be called Hotel Transylvania. The Great Hall is smoky and dimly lit, and its torches are affixed to the walls with skeleton hands. Let us also observe Roose Bolton's appearance. His eyes are a pale milky grey. They resemble two moons. You might argue that Roose simply has cataracts. But there is no mention of him having a vision disability. Also, his son Ramsey has the same colorless ghost gray eyes that he does. American author George Raymond Richard Martin wrote a novel 14 years before A Game of Thrones. It's called Fever Dream, and it's about good vampires versus bad vampires fighting each other along the 19th century Mississippi River on giant steamboats. Let us turn to scripture. Chapter 3, verse 5. His cool gray eyes studied the nearest steamboat with interest. Later we read, Something strange and haunted moved in Joshua York's gray eyes. His eyes are like two smoky gray slits opening onto hell. Joshua York is a people of the blood. A people. Humans call him a vampire. And he has the same gray eyes that Roose Bolton has. Curious. That's interesting. Damon Julian, the villain vampire to Joshua York's good guy vampire, is described very similarly to Roose Bolton. We read that Julian does not read or talk. He does not play chess. He eats indifferently. I do not think he even tastes it. Of Roose Bolton, we read that some men hunt, some hawk, some tumble dice. Roose plays with men. We are but his playthings so neither of them have any hobbies. Can this be just a coincidence? Coincidence? I think not! Roose Bolton's age is very hard to pin down exactly, which is strange because New Mexican author George Ronald Rule Martin is famous for having super precise calculations for everything related to numbers, such as the cost of goods, the sizes of armies, and release dates. Sheesh. So it must be intentional that Roos Bolton's age is never specified. Let's talk about that. In Book 5, we read that Roos Bolton is, quote, well past 40. The year is 300 AC, so he must have been born earlier than 260 AC. We also know that Barbary Dustin is the younger sister of Roos's second wife, Bethany Riswell, Domerick's mother. Barbary is described as having wrinkles and gray hair, placing her above the age of 40 as well. Damaric served as his aunt Barbary's page for four years, and he was described as a boy when he did so. Damaric was a squire in the Vale until he reached manhood, or 16 years of age. 
and Ramsay killed him shortly thereafter in 297 AC. If Damaric was 16 to 18 by his death in 297, that places his birth around 279 to 281. However, Damaric must have been older. Roos compares Damaric's skill at riding horses to the skill of Lyanna Stark, who died at the age of 16 in 283. For Domric to be close enough in age to Lyanna that their riding skills could be compared, he must have been born in the 260s or 270s. If that's true, then Roos was certainly born earlier than 260, and it explains how his former sister-in-law, Barbary Dustin, is visibly aged despite being a younger sister of Roos's second wife and the mother of Domeric. Domeric. I, uh, don't know how to pronounce this name. I don't have all the answers. You ain't got the answers, Sway! Yeah. I've been doing this more than you! We also know that Ned's father, Rickard Stark, was the Lord of Winterfell by the time Roos was Lord of the Dreadfort, since he mentions that he didn't want to get caught by Lord Rickard when he assaulted Ramsay's mother beneath the tree upon which her husband was being hanged. Rickard Stark died in 282 AC, when Domeric was likely a teenager, like the rest of the Stark children. That suggests Roos is of a similar age to Rickard Stark, since their children are of similar ages. Well, Rickard might have been born as early as 230 AC. As it's mentioned, he was born shortly after the summer of King Mykar Targaryen's reign, a summer which ended in 230 or 231. So if Roos and Rickard are of a similar age, with Roos maybe being slightly younger, he's potentially in his 60s currently. And by currently, I do mean 2011, the last time he appeared on a published page of a novel in the A Song of Ice and Fire fantasy series written by 15.6% broadly Northwestern European author George Martin. I'm still working on the book. That's the question you all want to ask. Don't fucking ask it. So if Roos is that old, well past 40, and potentially in his 60s, why is his skin unwrinkled, with scarce a line to tell the passage of time? And why is there an agelessness about him? Once again, the answer is hidden in plain sight. Roos Bolton is indeed ageless. Just like the vampire Damon Julian, might I add, another ancient being who appears ageless. The idea of immortality is explored in the prologue of A Dance with Dragons. Vermeer Sixkins is a skin changer, and he contemplates cheating death by continually warging into another creature to have a second life. This is foreshadowing, and I know it when I see it. Roose Bolton's son is Ramsay, a sadistic torturer. Ramsay killed his brother Domeric, and Roose hardly cares. He doesn't punish Ramsay. He instead legitimizes Ramsay and names him heir to the Dreadfort. Roos even says that Ramsay would probably kill any potential sons he would have with Walda Frey in order to remain Roos's only son, and Roos is not worried about it. So why Ramsay? Why has Roos Bolton chosen Ramsay to succeed him? The answer is found within his eyes. The thing men noticed first about Ramsay were his eyes. He had his lord father's eyes. Small, close-set, queerly pale, ghost-gray, some men called the shade. But in truth, his eyes were all but colorless, like two chips of dirty ice. So Ramsay has the same pale eyes that Roos has, meaning only that Ramsay possesses the skin-changing ability, while Domeric probably did not. This explains why Roos wasn't that sad about Domeric dying, since he only has a use for Ramsay. It also tracks with Roos's reasoning for keeping Ramsay alive in the first place, after his birth. He saw that little Ramsay had his eyes, eyes he could make his own after he wargs into them in the future and steals his own son's skin. In the vampire novel Fever Dream, written by former contributor to a 1964 issue of Marvel Comics Fantastic Four, George R. R. Martin, we read that Joshua York's father, who was also a vampire, who died when Joshua was young, lived in 18th century France, where he rose through French nobility by pretending he was his own son, generation after generation. This ruse explained why he never aged, 
due to being a vampire. Well, Roose Bolton is ageless and has pale ghost gray eyes, just like his son Ramsey, the sadistic torturer he only keeps alive because of his eyes. In those eyes, Bruce Bolton sees an opportunity to prolong his own life and steal Ramsey's skin, thus succeeding himself as the next Lord of the Dreadfort. When A Dream of Spring finally releases, and Ramsey starts acting super calm and creepy and starts leeching himself, we'll know the switch was made. As if you needed any more proof, there is a super scary scene of Bruce after he takes Harrenhal. He's reading a thick, leather-bound book by the fire. When Arya enters with his meal, Bolton turned a few more pages with his finger, then closed the book and placed it carefully in the fire. He watched the flames consume it, pale eyes shining with reflected light. The old dry leather went up with a whoosh, and the yellow pages stirred as they burned, as if some ghost were reading them. Let's dig a little deeper here. This is the most bananas thing Roos has ever done. Think about it. How many people have been in this room in Harrenhal? Of those few people, how many read this book? There are no printing presses in Westeros. Every book in the world is painstakingly hand-copied. The knowledge contained within this book might only ever have been read by a handful of people, and once Roos Bolton is finished with it, he just discards it into the fire, like an absolute psychopath. It makes no sense, until you realize what Roose Bolton was reading about. About 70 years ago, Harrenhal was ruled by Mad Donnell Lothston. On moonless nights, it was said bats would fly out of Harrenhal and bring back bad children for her to cook. She had feasts of human flesh and bathed in tubs of blood. She was a practitioner of dark arts, and given her inclination towards blood, even human blood, Mad Donnell could only have been a vampire, a person of the night, just like Roos. Roos Bolton was reading about vampire stuff and dark magic stuff written by Donnell Lothston, the former Lady of Harrenhal, and Roos burns her book after he reads it so no one else can learn that power. It's uprooting my world here. It doesn't make any sense here. <laughs> the final nail in the Roos Bolton is a skin-stealing immortal vampire coffin is his abnormal obsession with blood. He puts leeches all over his body to suck out all of his bad blood, since he believes that no man can think with all that rage and pain, and that frequent leechings are the secret of a long life. When he eats, he hardly eats at all and George puts more focus on the blood oozing from his meat than anything else. He can even smell the blood inside other people, and he knows when their blood smells wrong. We also know that Roos has no feelings. Those leeches that he loves so well sucked all the passions out of him years ago. He does not love, he does not hate, he does not grieve. Roos Bolton's lack of feelings and sense of emptiness is actually a reference to another spooky character of the 90s, Jack Skellington. In his hit single, Jack's Lament, he mentions that somewhere deep inside of these bones, an emptiness began to grow, and that there's an empty place in my bones that calls out for something unknown. Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas was released in 1993, when George R. R. Martin was in the middle of writing A Game of Thrones. He must have looked toward Jack Skellington as inspiration for his own immortal anti-hero with an empty soul. Let me know in the comments which other characters in A Song of Ice and Fire are obvious references to Halloween cartoons. Thanks for watching and subscribing.